All right, let's talk about site speed because uh, we mentioned this before, um, but we actually had the chance to work with you to uh, do some pretty cool things with the SDK. So initially when we started talking, you had some pretty significant requirements around speed. So I'd love to just talk about the limitations of the SDKs you were using before, and then just talk us through the, the two methodologies that we worked together to sort of have a significant uh, stepwise decrease in, um, in load times. Yeah, so I guess prior to, to Rudder Stack, we were uh, we, we'd actually started migrating to that warehouse first analytics for Segment, um, and I think you know Segment does some some things really well, and and um, but unfortunately, um, with our kind of clear, clear focus on performance. Um, we'd noticed that the segment uh, JavaScript snippet wasn't exactly particularly performant and was also doing a lot of things that we didn't need it to do. Um, we have, I think, quite a straightforward warehouse first integration. Um, I think others don't, but at the same time, we wanted to be able to uh, change it, improve it, make it better. And, and it didn't seem that we could. Uh, and, unfor and, and, and unfortunately, we were seeing that generally in Lighthouse and performance scores, Segment was one of the kind of key outliers along with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. But mm -hmm. in fact, we felt that for what we were doing with Segment, it just, it was causing us problems and we didn't really see a way out of that. And uh, look, uh, you know, Segment has gone for that jack of all trades, trying to do everything um, and trying to do, and, and, and with all of the destination integrations it has, but um, we felt like it wasn't configurable enough uh, to give us that um, that performance. Um, and th so that's why we started looking for alternatives before Rudder Stack came in. And I think that to talk about like where we came from. So, you know, uh, we worked really closely with Rudder Stack, which was awesome at the start um, to kind of define what we thought was um, a good JavaScript SDK um, and give some context around the performance and what was needed um, and, and why we thought that this was kind of the uh, uh, key part um, for, for us going forward. And um, I think there were kind of two key areas, right? One of them was uh, generally like um, the size of the bundle so like download as little as possible depending on what you're using it for which was um which i i, I was really well understood because I, I think what what had happened is um you know uh we rudder stack had built out the destination support um for all of the key destinations but wasn't was re still loading that all for for everybody and and now and and with that kind of context that will actually you know you can load we could just choose to what we load in and and most now I argue that most companies, right, have some control over their code. So it, you don't, you, you, you want an engineer to potentially connect a destination up, which means that we can then just say, well, we'll require that destination explicitly. It sure. meant the rudder stack moved towards this model of it'll only load in the libraries needed for the destinations that you're defining, which reduced the bundle size uh, drastically. I can't even remember the numbers. It was something like 200 to 200 kilobytes to 60 kilobytes or something like that, which was um, group, a, 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 a huge win um, and also reduce the kind of the the the, the parsing time um, and the execution time of the script uh, there was another piece actually that uh that um, isn't necessarily called out here but i still i, I think it's super cool because it's something that we do with our all of our javascript is um the router stack sdk only sends uh, modern JavaScript to modern browsers and legacy JavaScript to older browsers, which means that your your users that are using a more modern browser, which is always going to be over 90%, are actually getting a much smaller bundle than the users that are you, uh, sure. because it's highly optimized for that modern browser, which I think is awesome. I think more companies should be doing stuff like that because um, it, it starts, uh, you, you can start focusing on building something that's performant from, for the 90% versus for the 10%. And then I think the second one was then starting to think about uh, well, we send a lot of events when you land on a page and, and those events can be synchronous because, um, you know, uh, the, the, the default XHR request is always synchronous. How do we ensure that we um, don't block the main thread and how do we ensure that the, the rest of our experience continues to happen um, and we can still get all of those events um, from Rudder Stack? Uh, and that's where we started trialing out this um, the the beacon, um, which is you know a, a widely supported API. But actually, in fact, a lot of SDKs still don't use it um, because of legacy browsers potentially, but also because there are some quirks with it. 
Um, but uh, we wanted to start using Beacon One because it's it's asynchronous, especially when uh, you're offloading events after you move from one page to the other, um, and two because it's uh, it, it it improves the performance from the from kind of the the sending of those events. And we we actually ran an A/B test of this um and and i and and we were trying to measure the impact was on loading time was on on total blocking time and on first input delay and, and if you don't know first input delay is one of the key core web chrome web vitals that google will start reporting on um as a key one for seo scores as of may and you can see the the graph that actually shows that the first input delay of um of the beacon um, so the, the, using the Send Beacon API was just dramatically lower, right? So like, I think it was like 200 and something, that nearly 300 milliseconds actually, um, to under 20 milliseconds first input delay um, by moving um, off the, the synchronous XHR request to the beacon. And naturally we can just turn this on, right? So people that still want to use the XHR because um, there are some reliability pieces then that you can choose to, but the performance impact was huge. And, and now we are confident that this isn't going to affect our first input delay um, for uh, for the future. Incredible. Well, it, I can say from experience, it was really fun to work with you on building those out. And we still talk internally about the performance improvements because it's pretty, pretty incredible.